In this video, I'm going to teach you how to solve logarithmic equations. So there are different forms of logarithmic equations when I say form. Uh, the given problems may differ on how they are presented. For instance, suppose we want to solve the equation log base 5 of 4x plus 1 equals 2 and another problem is log base 2 of x plus 5 minus log base 2 of 2x minus 1 is equal to 5. So as you can see, somehow there is a difference between the two given problems and more if we have, say, log base, say, base 8 with an x plus log base 8 of x plus 6 and then say equals log base 8 of 5x plus 12 okay, we're in the first one we have a log on the left side and a number on the other side and then the second we have two logarithms with a difference of so two logarithms on the left side and a number on the other side and the third one is we have a sum of logarithms and then equals to another logarithms okay so I'll solve these equations and you will see how to approach different types of logarithmic equations okay we'll start with the first one so this is one and then two and three for number one which is the most basic logarithmic equation 5, 4x plus 1 equals 2. So if the logarithmic equation is given in this form, one possible solution is to immediately convert this logarithmic equation into an exponential equation. So you need to know that if we have log base b of y is equal to x, this is the same as saying b to the x is equal to y. This is something that you should know. Otherwise, it will not or you will not be able to solve the log base 5 of 4x plus 1. This is plus 1 equals 2. Okay? So following the relationship of these two equations, one of the logarithm and another on exponential equations, we will transform this logarithmic equation into exponential equation and that is simply by taking the 5 the base see the base b so take the base b and then you raise it to the exponent 2 as we can see b will be raised to x and the value is equal to y so take the 5 take the 5 you raise it to 2 and this is equal to 4x plus 1 so we have 5 squared is equal to 4x plus 1. And from a logarithmic equation, as you can see, this is now, or it is now reduced into a linear equation in which 5 squared is 25 and 4x plus 1 will remain as 4x plus 1. And to continue with the solution, this is 4x if we subtract 1 on both sides, so minus 1 and minus 1 then 4x must be equal to 24 finally to get the value of x we simply divide 4x by 4 and 24 over 4 is simply equal to 6 and this is a possible solution okay so what did I why did I say that it's a possible solution because for most or for logarithmic equations it's very important that we check the value that we get if they are acceptable values for the x and how do we know if it if it is an acceptable value for x if we go back to our given equation we have 4x plus 1 with a base 5 equals 2 the rule for logarithms is that first the base cannot be negative so the base b should be positive at the same time, b should not be equal to 1 and it should not be equal to 0. 
and that same rule will apply for 4x plus 1 except that for 4x plus 1 4x plus 1 should always be positive but cannot be equal to 0 4x plus 1 by the way is allowed to be equal to 1 okay now going back to our x value 6 what we are trying to avoid is for this 4x plus 1 to be negative and if we check if we substitute 6 to the 4x plus 1 so 4x plus 1 is 4 times 6 plus 1 is equal to 25 then it, since 25 is a positive number 4x plus 1 is a positive number then x equals 6 is a solution to the equation okay so that's how you solve a basic logarithmic equation one with a logarithm on the left side and a number on the other side now let's take a look at the second example we have log base 2 of x plus 5 minus log base 2 of 2x minus 1 equals 5 so how do we solve equations if we have more than one log especially that you have a difference of two logarithms so let's copy again the given log base 2 of x plus 5 and then you have minus log base 2 of 2x minus 1 is equal to 5 now here is the main idea whenever you solve for logarithmic equations the main idea is to reduce the logarithmic equation make it simple and if possible transform it into the form of example number one wherein we only have a single logarithm and a number on the other side or at least a logarithm on one side and also a single logarithm on the other side so what do i mean by that so as you can see we have the difference of two logarithms now if you will recall there is a rule or a law in logarithm that Whenever we have log any base A, acceptable base A, and this is M, and log of the same base A of N, if the two logarithms are separated by subtraction, or meaning to say it's a difference of two logarithms, then these two logarithms can be written as the quotient, in this case M over N. And that's uh, what we call the quotient law. And the counterpart of this quotient law is the product law, in which if we have log base A of M, but this time plus the sum, okay, it's the sum of log base M and log base A of N, then by a certain rule or law, which we call the product law, this can be simplified into log base A but we now get the product of m and n okay so going back to our example this is a case in which we have the difference of two logarithms so we will be applying the quotient law so rewriting the log base 2 of x plus 5 minus log base 2 of x minus 1 this will become the log base 2 and we can now have x plus 5 on the numerator and 2x minus 1 in the denominator and this is equal to 5 so if you take a look at it now this is like example number one a single log on one side and a number on the other side so all we have to do is to repeat the process or the, the steps that we uh, did in example number one and that is to convert this to exponential equation again to convert the exponential equation we focus on the base we get the base this is raised to 5 and if you raise it to 5 it's equal to x plus 5 over 2x minus 1 and the equation is now reduced into 2 raised to 5 and 2 raised to 5 is equal to 32 meaning to say 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 and this is equal to x plus 5 over 2x minus 1. Solving further, this will be 32 2x minus 1. That is by multiplying both sides by 2x minus 1. 
That's always the case when we have fractions in equations. We have to eliminate the denominator, and we can simply do that by multiplying both sides by the, by the LCD or LCM, which is 2x minus 1. So we have x plus 5 on the other side because the 2x minus 1 will cancel with the 2x minus 1. And now we have 32 times 2x, that's 64x. Be careful when you distribute, and this is minus 32 equals x plus 5. Isolating x, this will be 64x minus x and 5, while on the other side you get plus 32. Okay? 64 minus x is equal to 63x. 5 plus 32 is equal to 37. And dividing both sides by 63, the value of x is equal to 37 over 63. Okay, so it's a fraction. We don't need to change it into decimals. Now let us solve the last equation. And this is given as log base 8 of x plus log base 8 of x plus 6 equals log base 8 of 5x plus 12. Okay, so this time we have two logarithms on the on the left side and then another logarithm on the other side. Now same idea will be applied. You have to make the logarithmic equation um, be transformed into a more simple expression okay, for the left side and on the other side. And as we can see we have the sum of the um, we have the sum of two logarithms so we will be applying the product law that if we have the, the sum of two logarithms we can combine them into a single logarithm log base 8 base 8 and you have the x multiplied by x plus 6 and that's by the product law on the other side we simply copy log base 8 of 5x plus 12 now, unlike the first one in which we have a log equal to a given number, if you will encounter a log, one logarithm on the left side and one logarithm on the other side, by just doing some correspondence, if you try to observe, this is log base 8, and this is log base 8, and these two no, the left side is equal to the right side. So, by just observing, by making correspondence, we should be able to tell that x times x plus 6 is equal to 5x plus 12. Right? By correspondence, okay, by observing that this is already log base 8. This is log base 8. The two sides are the same. There's no other way. The two, this must be equal to this. Right? In general, there's a, actually a generalization on that. If we have log base A of M is equal to log of the same base A to N, immediately we can say that M is equal to N. That's what we applied here. Okay? So the logarithm, this, the seemingly complex logarithmic equation, is now reduced into just x times x plus 6 equals 5x plus 12. Okay, so continue, to continue with the solution, x times x plus 6 is equal to 5x plus 12. And then, just solve. You distribute x squared plus 6x is equal to 5x plus 12. Now, if you try to look at the equation, what we are having now is a, an equation. It's an equation in which you have the highest degree is 2, and we are anticipating a quadratic equation. And whenever we have a quadratic equation, to solve a quadratic equation, the key is always to make the other side equal to zero. So if we have to make this side equal to zero, then we have to subtract 5x and 12, and also 5x and 12. To maintain the balance, it's an equation. So x squared plus 6x minus 5x minus 12, this side is now x squared plus x minus 12, while the other side is now equal to 0. Some people say just transpose 5x and 12 on the other side and you have 
x squared plus x minus 12 as a result. Okay, solving quadratic equations, we'll need factoring skills. So this is x and x. For the numbers, think of factors of 12, negative 12 to be exact, in which the sum will be 1 because we have a 1x. 12 has factors 4 and 3. So we have 4 and 3. To keep a positive x, this must be positive and this must be negative. Okay, something that you need to review if just in case you are no longer familiar with um, the factoring of quadratic expressions. Okay, so x plus 4 times x minus 3 equal to 0. As we know, it means x plus 4 is equal to 0 or x minus 3 is equal to 0. Here, x is negative 4 and then x is equal to 3. Okay, this is an interesting problem because we now have an example of an answer in which it's a negative. And in most cases, this negative x uh, tend to be, uh, it, they seem to be a solution. Okay, but if you check again, we have to check if these numbers are allowed. If x is negative 4, this is our given problem. If x is negative 4, then this x becomes negative 4. And as, the, as we stated earlier, we cannot have a negative number here. So even if we were able to get x equals negative 4 in our solution, we will not be including x equals negative 4. And we call this an extraneous solution extraneous solution it is like a solution but it doesn't follow the condition for logarithmic expressions it, we cannot have x to be negative in the given okay so x negative 4 will be removed in the solution what about x equals 3 imagine putting the 3 here that's allowed 3 here, that's 3 plus 6 equals 9, that's allowed, that's a positive number. 5 times 3 plus 12, 5 times 3 is 15, plus 12 is equal to 27, 27 is a positive number. Again, what I'm saying is, you have to keep the values here positive, the actual values, not just the solution, but the values, okay? If you substitute the value that you get, the x equals negative 4 and x equals 3, this x, this x plus 6, and 5x plus 12 should be positive values or numbers. Okay? So, in the end, we will be stating that the only solution to this equation is x equals negative 3. So, therefore, we just say x must be equal to 3, or in a solution set, this is just 3. Okay? So, these are just three of the examples of, you know, many logarithmic equations okay yeah we have seen a simple one and then we simply change it into exponential equation and then we solve we have seen a difference of two logarithms and we compress that by using the quotient law and we also have the sum of two logarithms compressed into sing a single logarithm using the product law and there's so many uh, equations you might encounter we haven't seen anything that uh, that will need the use of the power law. We haven't seen a logarithmic equation in which the bases are not the same. Okay, so these are just the basic examples of uh, logarithmic equations. But I hope that you are able to understand. And eventually, if you see equations like this, you, know, you can simply solve them. Okay, so that's it.